a couple of supplements that made it. Androstenedione is no longer actually pushed as much as it used to be. And then creatine. I was just at GNC the other day. They still push this stuff. And there actually are some data that suggest that this does increase muscle <coughs> with comparable workouts and randomly assigned groups. But it's pretty expensive. Uh, Now the drug test, I don't want to drive you nuts with the different techniques and all this. Stuff. This isn't what's important. But this showed up in the steroid section in part because we got a couple of key ideas, and this is going to be markedly more important when we're talking about it with pot. Right. But we have sensitivity and specificity of any drug test. Right. There we go. Literally, how much does there have to be in order for the test to even detect it? Right? And I get two emails a week. Dr. Mitch, just wondered, oh, well, I used to be a daily user, and I have this job review coming up in five days. Do I have a chance? I'm like, dude, no, you don't. <laughs> what should you do to pass a drug test? You should have water in one hand and your dick in the other, and just, like, go. This is the only thing we've had really work consistently in the literature. The shit that's advertised in the back of high times, I have a column in high times, like I don't want a bad mouth out times, but we don't know if those work or not, right? And what do they say? You're running back if you don't pass the test. Like, well, thanks a lot, dude, except I didn't get the fucking job, so 50 bucks really isn't going to make that much difference. Alas, THC stores in body fat. We don't have a ton of data, but yeah, if you happen to have more body fat, and what a surprise, being exposed to a lot of THC does seem to increase the consumption of sweet foods. <laughs> we do have a problem. Now, the, the irony then is, you know, the hallucinogens, LSD does not store in the body fat, right? So we're encouraging people to go trip instead of just have a joint at night. <coughs> Our own drug war problem, right? But how much needs to be there in order for it to be detected depends upon where you draw the line on the test, right? There are tests that are set so that if you've got even a little bit, they want to detect it, and they don't care if they give you a false positive, right? They don't care if you happen to be put in the user group by accident. Specificity, how likely is this false positive? Right. Obviously, you can't have both. If I make the test more sensitive, okay, I'm going to get more false positives. Right. And we argue about this all the time in the cannabis and driving literature and a lot of the pot stuff. But with the steroids, okay, in the athletes, they can say, hey, there was a false positive. They'll request a second test with the same urine and request a more expensive test. So that list of tests is sort of in order of expense and sensitivity and things like that. Right? And generally, that's the big issue. Okay. These are broad generalities based on relatively small samples. Right? Because in truth, the federal government doesn't fund big studies for how to beat a drug test. <laughs> right? So marijuana heavy use one to two months, sad but true. Right? If you're a daily user, it's going to take a while to be able to test clean. Right? I just had to get this long-term care insurance, and I was like, fucking peeing on the stick every day myself. It's like, okay, I'm going to pass this. I just got to find out when. Right? And that's the only way to know for sure is to buy your own test. Right? But it's a little ironic that I could have done fucking lines of blow and been ready the next day. Right? But if that's not your drug of choice, then you're in trouble. Right? The steroids last a long time. So you can see analog steroids are typical six to eight months. Right? But the orals are not so long. <laughs> This is another issue. All right. If your hair happens to be dark and curly, 
it seems to be detectable longer. Right? And I mean, could we be more racist? Right? <laughs> this is just some accident with the test. Right? Okay. Looks like, uh, for cannabis at least, it depends on how long your hair is. Okay? So if you've got hair down to here, that hair on the end is from a long time ago. If they take that, and that's when you were using, they got it. Okay? What happens? All right, so my friends who work in computers in Palo Alto, the, the computer companies hardly even do this anymore, but he would shave his head. Right? And so what they do, they go for this. Right? They'll get some hair off you. <laughs> you go in there completely clean, they get a little suspicious. That's, what Britney Spears her head. <laughs> That's a better hypothesis than she's going psychotic. <laughs> but as we all saw, she didn't shave any lower. So. <laughs> yeah. But the culture here is the hair test is racially biased, right? I went to the ONDCP's big drug testing thing and accused a guy of this, and he said, oh no, that's not true anymore, I'll send you the paper. The paper was some paper they wrote in-house that was total bullshit, right? So if your skin's darker than mine, or your Spanish is better, or your hair is darker and curlier, you're at a disadvantage, okay? Know that ahead of time. If you got like, hey, the fucking hair test is tomorrow, all right, bleach it, get a perm, and then dye it back. It'll probably fucking fall out of it. <laughs> but at least you've done everything you can to get it out of your hair, all right? Now, who does hair testing? So, I mean, back when you actually went to Blockbuster and like got a video at the store, my undergrads are like, oh, no, they got to do a drug test so I can work at Blockbuster. I'm like, what are you going to do, fucking put Martin Fink in with the comedy? It's like, what is, the big, <laughs> what is the big tragedy if you smoke pot at home when you work at Blockbuster? Right? Oh, you're going to stay and watch all the movies and eat all the popcorn. Right? So I feel like we got to resist. Now, it's easy for me, right? This is a drug-free work environment. So I'm subject to random urinalysis. That's going to happen. Right. When I was in the VA, they were always like, oh, well, you never know when you're going to get a drug screen. I'm like, yeah, they want me. Right. But yeah, they do. My stepdad worked at Winchester. Right? The guns couldn't be in the room with people smoking pot. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What blows my mind is when you talk to these guys, they say, well, 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 it's kind of a test of your character. If you want a test of my character, Maybe my key isn't the place to go. <laughs> All right, enough about my drug testing. The bottom line is pot seems to last a long time, but the anabolic injectables are really long. And this is why some folks move to the oral ones just because they're shorter. Right? And then everybody does that cycling where if you've got a competition coming up, you know you're going to have to get off at a certain point. 